Mr. Andreas, welcome to Comic Con. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Uh, you are a Disney legend. Uh, much respect to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank so, you. Talk to us about this short film, Amushka. What's the inspiration for this short film? Well, I just uh, there came a time after working 30 years at Disney to do my own thing. You know, I thought, what would that look like and what would that be? And uh, uh, I asked myself, what would you like to animate and draw that you hadn't, uh, that you haven't animated yet? And I, I've always been fascinated by, by tigers. I wanted to do a story about the tiger. But, but that's not enough, you know. I thought there should be a human element in it too. So I paired the tiger up with a young girl called Sarah and she would raise the tiger, and then as, the, as they bond and the tiger is big, there's a danger, because the girl finds out that there are some bad people around them who want to kill the tiger and sell him. So that was the basis of the story, but then you reach out to friends for help to flesh out the story, and then you storyboard it, and then you animate it with help of others, and then now we have an almost half hour film. I saw the trailer. Talk, about, talk to me about the animation, 2D, right? Hand drawn a little bit, a lot, lot of sketching on the sides of the, the character designs. Talk to me about that, the choice of animation. Yeah, the, the first films at Disney, or the first Disney films, I should say, I saw when I was a kid were the ones from the 60s and 70s. So it was 101 Dalmatians, The Sword in the Stone, Robin Hood. And when you look at those films, they're very sketchy. They were not really, the, the drawings weren't really tight and clean. They were, they were loose, like a, like a sketchbook. And I said, I want to do that, because that means I have my drawings on the screen, rather than my assistant drawings who would clean up my drawing. Uh -huh. That was the whole idea, to have this sort of sketchy feel to the, to the film. And so I decided that very early on. And that also goes for the backgrounds as well, because they have to match in the, in their, in the sketchiness yeah. level. So I talked to my background painters and said, you know, don't finish the, the backgrounds. Keep them kind of loose and sketchy. And so that's what we have now, an animated, sketchy looking film. When people call you a Disney legend, what does that do for you? What, what feelings does it get, give you? Well, that's an award that the company mm -hmm. uh, gives you. Um, and I think it basically means that the company is happy with what you did for them. And I spent 30 years over there as a supervising animator. Uh, doing villains uh, for, for a while, for quite a few years, like Gaston in Beauty and the Beast, and Jafar in Aladdin, and Scar in Lion King, and then it was time to change. I said, I need a break, and I did Hercules, who was the hero of the story, and I even did Lilo, and Lilo and Stitch, so. Yes. But that's the beauty of uh, being an animator, that you can shift gears and do different types of characters. You don't need to be typecast, you know? That was the beauty of my ma many years at Disney that I was able to do from Roger Rabbit to Jafar to Lilo, all of those different things. So when is Mushka going to be released? When can we see this? Yeah, we haven't really offered it yet to the streaming companies. That, that'll that be next. We're just fo focusing on film festivals, San Diego, San Diego Comic Con and things like that. So that, that'll be next to, to offer it for, for sale. Okay, before I let you go, what's your advice for aspiring young animators that want to break into the business and have a career, as successful as career as you? I would say to anybody is, who's interested in uh, animation, whether it's 2D animation, which is hand-drawn, or even CG, uh, learning how to draw is kind of a good thing, and it will really helps you in both. Because if you, if you really know how to draw well, it means you have, ob you have observed things. You will ha have looked at animals and people. So I think learning how to draw and draw well is really a good basis. All right, Ms. Andreas, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Mr. Fabrizio, congratulations on Mushka. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I saw the trailer, so talk to me about the inspiration for the music that would fit the vision that Andreas had had. Well, it's, uh, as I always like to say, it's a, an instinct for me to write over some kind of images what they call and what they require, and I work in that direction. So with Mushka, it was the same. I uh, like saw what Andreas had uh, conceived in this like beautiful uh, film, uh, hand drawn, like uh, not so refined style, more sketchy. It was like opening for me one of the beautiful um, uh, illustrated books that my parents had when they were growing up, and they passed them to me. And that was like uh, why I, I wrote all the themes by hand. There was a beautiful Richard Sherman's theme, but I wrote all the themes by hand because I felt it was the, the best way to connect my heart with the paper and with the music itself. I'm a classically trained musician, so I use technology. I, I, I write into the computer right now, but like, but for this, I wanted to go back to the, the roots of what I do and to the beauty of, uh, of writing something from the heart.
yeah. for Andreas. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, talk to me about the instruments that you use. So well, we use a classical orchestra. It's a very classic um, score. Uh, it's not a modern, edgy, uh, electronic instrumental score, but it's like a score that used like a almost 70-piece orchestra we recorded in Vienna. Uh, also wow. some traditional uh, instruments from the uh, Russian, uh, former Soviet Union tradition, more European. So I felt home because that, that was like a way uh, that I have of writing, you know, symphonic stuff. But at the same time, uh, I feel like that sometime I spoke with uh, one, with important composers, and you always try to find the right music for a project. There's not one way, there's multiple way of writing, but you try to give the right one. So the right one for this one was like something that matched like the pastel color, beautifully classic drawing, without though trying to write something that is more a classical and classic writing than something like uh, super new that doesn't fit, you know? And I think with the, it a lot comes from the heart in this, the melodies and uh, the arrangements and orchestrations we chose come from the heart. Final question, I wanna ask, I'm curious, what are some of the film score composers out there that are your influences, your inspiration and why? Well, I have a lot because every day I like uh, a new one. Um, like I, I try not to pick heroes because otherwise I limit my, myself. It's like um, the question, what's your favorite color? So I have many colors. It's a rainbow of colors. I, of course, I use and I love and I will forever love Ennio Morricone, who uh, was like been one of the greatest geniuses. Nino Rota is for Italian. I like John Williams, of course. But I love Alan Menken a lot. I love Alexandre Desplat a lot. My friend, whom I am honored to call a friend, uh, Chris Bowers of the New Generation, I get to conduct for him. And he's such an amazing uh, colleague, like um, Rachel Portman. So there is so many. I would spend hours and hours mentioning them. Because each and every one of them has a personality, which is what I try to develop. I try to develop my own personality music-wise. That's right.